Alrighty, welcome back folks. Today we're going to be reloading on the 20 gauge Lee Lodol. I just got it mounted onto the desk here and you can see we're pretty close, but I figured with them this close together, my footprint is much smaller than half of it here and half of it here. And then that cuts into my workspace on either side of it to where if I'm sitting centered, I can easily access this and move my crap over here when I'm done with it. So I have the same workflow. So there's no problem. And actually, the 12 gauge has a red handle, so that's easy to identify. And you can see I've actually got a hole stuck in there and the handle moved backwards so that there's no way to mix up powders and shots and whatnot. And ideally, I'm going to be emptying this out between uses so there's absolutely no confusion as to what press we're on or what we're loading, what powder is happening, what amount of shot is being thrown, all these kinds of things. So anyways, stick with me. We'll finish setting this up. We're going to get our bushing and uh, such installed here and we'll get into it. So as many of you have mentioned, there's a sweet mod you can make. The 314299 shooting channel had a quick little tip video on installing your hole there so you can dump out your shot or powder much more simpler. So we went ahead, knocked that out on both of those. We're installed here. We just have to take this front plate off to get our shot and powder bushings installed. So we'll go ahead and break that open. Okay, we've got that off. This is the same plate on both presses. Everything is the exact same except for this piece here that has the guide rods and the crimps built into it. So we take out our charge bar this way, same way as on the 12 gauge. And here we have our powder bushing and shot bushing and how we determine those. First, you need to determine what you're gonna be shooting and your load for that. And we see right here on the bottle from Hodgden, we've got 20 gauge, seven eighths ounce load there. I'm using Winchester holes and we've got a max charge of 14 grains. So pretty simple there. We know our charge weight now and we know what holes we're using. So I went to Hodgden to find the Lee bushing chart here and we see with the international column, if we come down to our closest charge to 14 grains without going over it, we see 13.7 grains with the 0.105 bushing insert there so now we know what powder bushing we need and there's our 105 bushing and we are using 7 8 ounces of shot and I'm just reusing my dirty one from the 12 gauge just so I'll have a spare in case anything happens and actually I want to modify that one to get down to a 3 quarter ounce load so it has actually smaller capacity because this is the smallest one that comes in the kit. So I'm going to reuse this 7 8 ounce shot here. Simply slides up in here and same with our powder bushing and then back into the press. And if it's difficult to move this direction, there's two screws inside, one inside each hopper that'll uh, increase your tension between the two halves of the press. But I think that'll be nice. We can work it in there. It'll get nice and smooth. Well, all you have to do is install the front plate now. So this front plate doesn't have to be super tight because once again, your tension is pretty much set by these two screws inside the press. And this cover here is just keeping your charge bar from falling out. Very cool. So I already know that my shot hopper is gonna drop the right amount of shot because I'm using the same shot and the same bushing that was over here earlier. So all we have to do is test our powder and make sure that one is throwing correctly and we'll be good to go here. So once again, with the international, So as per the instructions, you want to make sure you're more than about a quarter full or else it might not fill the hopper properly. And I don't want to move that because we'll dump powder everywhere, but we'll get our lid back on. Come on up and we'll just play with one of these holes that haven't been uh, deprimed or reprimed yet, but we can come up here into the press and dump our powder just like that. 
it's hard to see in here, but let me dump it out into the scale pan and take a look at some Hodgdon International. So here's a look at Hodgdon International clays. It's very confusing because they have clays, universal clays, international clays, and if you're online looking for data and you just see the word clays, you gotta be very specific and know which one you're looking for and which one you're talking about. This one is international clays. So as we see, it has both green and red pellets, or flakes, similar to green dot or red dot, except instead of one little flake dispersed amongst all the others, it's all green and all red. So pretty cool stuff. Let's throw it on the scale here and see what it weighs and see how close that bushing is. So I set the scale to the 13.7 that we're supposed to have from the bushing. And it's pretty much dead on, maybe a tenth over, which is okay, because our maximum was 14 grains. And if we're within a tenth of that throw that we're looking for, I consider that well within spec, especially because we're not over maximum. So that's perfect. Let's run it a few more times and see if we're still getting the same thing after a couple more throws. So we don't have any shot. We can run it back and forth a few times just to uh, let the powder settle. I'm thinking it might get a little, little bit heavier. Hopefully not. But we'll see here. Okay, that was plenty. Okay, back to shot. And over to powder. Yes sir, we're still within that tenth of a grain, so I'm happy with that. Good stuff. Let's uh, go ahead and we'll start the first shell, and when I get to the shot, I'll go ahead and measure that charge and make sure that weight is in spec. So once again, you have a sizing ring. The ring is on the top. It goes over your spent hole. And we can uh, run it on down the guide rod, punch out your primer, make sure that case head there is fully sized all the way down to flush. Then we come over right here with a new primer. Go ahead and bring that down in the center. We bring our ring off and then we reprime all the way down. And there's a pretty little Winchester hole with a nice new Cheddite primer. And yes, we're using the Cheddite primers. These are European. They're one thousandth larger than domestic primers. So if I go back to a Winchester or a CCI or a Federal, they're not going to fit. So I have to pretty much say I'm sticking with Cheddites. There are, however, a couple tools you can use. You probably have laying on hand in the garage or something, and it'll resize your primer pockets back down to that domestic size if you need to do that. Anyways, let's go ahead and throw some powder. All right, we've got our powder charge again. Now I'm going to set this aside. We'll go ahead and fill up our shot. See how that looks. All right, well, that shot's nice and dirty, but let's go ahead and see what it's dropping for us. Again, we'll run it a couple times just to check and see. Make sure not to dump your shot into your powder or your powder into your shot. Okay, and 7 eighths of an ounce is approximately 382 grains. So there's 371 grains out of 382. I'm going to go ahead and say that's well within spec. So let's go ahead and run our case through it. I called it a case. It's definitely a hole. All right, so we had powder. I gotta get that one back out of the way. Here's our charged and reprimed hole now. And actually, since I've dropped powder, we need a wad. This one is the CB107820, 20 gauge, optimum load, seven eighths. That's what we're going for. And it's a replacement for the WAA20. So that's pretty much your standard 20 gauge wad until other federal stuff comes back in stock. So there we go. I can 
ride that down nice and smooth. Make sure we're fully compressed into the uh, hole there. No powder shaking. Nothing spilling by. Very nice. Let's dump in our shot and we'll see what kind of uh, fill we get there. So that's very nice. It's right at the top of the wad and right at the bottom of our crimping line there from the other firing. So let's go ahead and try to crimp. I should probably read the instructions and figure out which crimp I need to use before I just run it in there because I think it's backwards compared to the 12 gauge. So over here you've got eight points in the front and six in the back. Let me make sure what I'm doing here. Place the shell under the proper crimp starter. Keep an inward fold of the shell mill towards the front for the proper alignment. So what this says is note the eight segment crimp starter is in the front on the 12 gauge only. So that means eight is on the back for my 20. All right, eight points. We need the valley of the crimp facing us as best we can. Pre-crimp. That feels mighty fine. And final crimp. Wow, my very first 20 gauge hole reload ever. That's not too bad right there, folks. Tell you what now. Not much more shaking than you would get from a uh, factory load. We're not caving in. We're right filled up where we need to be. That's freaking beautiful. Go ahead and set that back there. We'll pop our lid back on because we're not checking our measurements or any of that anymore. Actually, I've got a box specifically for 20 gauge holes. Do they fit down downwards? No, nope. gotta go. Gotta go face first. So if they're leaking, you're gonna know it. <laughs> So yeah, heck yeah fillers, we're on the 20 gauge train now, mm-hmm, fully sized, nope, not fully sized, not fully sized, now we're fully sized, new primer, kick off the ring, now we need powder, a new wad, shot 20 gauge 8 point crimp on the rear valley of the crimp facing towards us hold for a few seconds to set and then swiftly move to the final crimp and you're done Check her out, Fowler's looky there, man. Now that's fancy stuff there, brother. One more and we'll be done for the day. And this was our intro to 20 gauge reloading. Lucky number three, there we go, folks. And there we have it, our very first three 20 gauge shells ever loaded. I think those crimps are looking mighty fine. They're gonna hold up just well. Our data is right on the safe side under our max charge there. That's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out folks and we will see you in the next video. Have a good one.